How can this possibly be the same band as the A-side? I bought over 445s on eBay. Now I'm going through them, cleaning each one, and looking for lost gems. And the next one is Chicago. The songs are Free Country and Free. It appears that Free is the A-side and Free Country is the B-side, although I'm not sure about that. Now, again, I must say that I am a child of the 80s, so when I think of Chicago, what I think of is hard to say I'm sorry and stay the night and stuff like that from the early 80s. Now, of course, I know about like Saturday in the Park and 25 or 6 to 4 and um, is that it? <laughs> I can't think of anything else. Anyway. So I know, I've heard a lot of times that early Chicago is like really, really, really awesome, very w well produced, good sounding, amazing kind of progressive rock almost, or symphonic, not symphonic, but like blood, sweat, and tears, like brass section type awesome. I've heard very good things about it, but I don't know anything about it. Uh, it says it's from a, an album called Chicago, so who knows what uh, album it's from. It, this might, uh, here's what I think, I think it's going to turn out to be a song that when I hear it I go, oh I know this song, like I've heard it on the radio but I don't quite know it. Uh, the B-side, Free Country, is almost it's five and a half minutes long, so who knows what that's going to be like. Could be boring, could be awesome. Let's check it out. Free. Stay the night! Doesn't sound familiar, but it's pretty awesome. Super 70s funk. Not knowing about Chicago. Is there like a pre and post Peter Cetera era? Is that how it works? I was right about the brass section. Wow, these guys are actually are are clearly like, virtuosos, clearly into their instruments. They're not just trying to do silly pop. They're serious about the music. So what I've heard was right. Wow, this is busy. I just want to be free. The love theme to Karate Kid 2. Wow, that's some sweaty funk. It's not doing. And there you go. Spooky. This is totally different. Is it a five and a half minute piano solo? Sounds like a Debussy song piece thing. Movement. The same band. A side was all loud, noisy funk. This is like classical prog rock. Prog. <laughs> Not rock. This is what happens, you know, when Robert Fripp takes a break on those King Crimson albums. Now, now it's like Amagama. It's like Nick Mason's part of Amagama. Right? Can this possibly be the same band as the A-side? This is what Chicago sounded like. I really want to tell you I love you. How did this become that? If this came out after Amagama, one point for Nick Mason and Pink Floyd. <laughs> wow. Someone, not me, should do a mashup of the A-side of this you know, free and then free country. It'll be horrible. Call her moon child. Well, okay. As a child of the 80s, I have to admit, there is way more to Chicago than I ever thought. I wonder if the Chicago of the 80s, like Chicago 17, Chicago 18, those albums, I wonder if that was any of the same people. Doesn't sound like it. Like Fleetwood Mac, you know? Like Fleetwood Mac was this thing in the 60s, and then by 1978 it was this thing, which is maybe also good, but a completely different thing. 
This may be the strangest thing I've heard on any of these 45s so far in this whole series. Something ominous is happening. Very slow ominousness. I like Nick Mason, but with no drums whatsoever. And that's it. Well, that was weird. Gracious. Free is like. Phew. Free is hard funk. Free country is this. Spacey, atonal, uh, arrhythmic piano and flute piece. Which is, I like that, but completely different vibes. Completely different vibes on this. I would probably keep both of these songs because so they're both really cool. I would keep both of them in my playlist, but I wouldn't want to play them back to back because my head would explode. So let's go figure out more about what exactly is this? Where does it fit into Chicago and... Why is, this, why is this Chicago so different than the one that I remember from 1984? As it turns out, both Free and Free Country are parts of a 22-minute piece called Travel Suite from the 1971 album Chicago 3. The A-side was free, and it got to number 20. I'd have known some of this if I would have just checked the label more closely. And except for Terry Kath, who accidentally shot himself dead in 1978, the Chicago of Free and Free Country is nearly identical to the band that did all that soft rock in the 80s. The change in style seems to be thanks to Peter Cetera, who'd been slowly emerging as a more dominant songwriter for Chicago over the years. Thus, Hard Habit to Break, Hard to Say I'm Sorry, You're the Inspiration, Golly Gee But You're a Pretty Lass, A Cup of Rainbows for My Sweetheart, and of course, Symptom of the Universe, I mean The Glory of Love. I think I prefer the earlier Chicago, or even better, a Magumma. Who knew Nick Mason's part of Umagumma would uh, have such far-reaching ten, 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 tendrils, tentacles? When you try talking to a camera when you're listening to music, golly, it's bright. <laughs> 